Now we're going to switch gears for a moment and look at the SN1 reaction. Uh, once we talk about this, then we'll look at some of the features of both reactions together. The SN1 is substitution nucleophilic unimolecular. The unimolecular portion means there's one molecule in the rate determining step. And we'll talk about what that is here in just a moment. So let's look at a sample SM1 reaction. Here I have an organobromide and I'm using hydroxide as a nucleophile. I also have water here as a solvent and the water has lone pairs and can act as the nucleophile as well. But for a substitution we're substituting one thing for another. And what we're substituting here is the bromine for the OH. So here's our substitution product and of course our leaving group the bromide. So on first glance it doesn't look much different than SN2. The difference lies in the mechanism. The SN1 actually has an intermediate that forms. So the way that the SN1 works is first we have loss of a leaving group. That's going to give us a carbocation plus our leaving group that left the bromide. Now in a second step we have the nucleophilic attack. And if we use the hydroxide that will attack the carbocation to give us the product. And it's this first step where we lose the leaving group that's the slow step. That's the hard thing to do because you're losing something to form an unstable intermediate. So that's our rate determining step. So now if we think about the rate law for this, the rate really only depends on this slow step here. And the nucleophile is not involved in the slow step, only the organohalide. So the rate is the rate constant times the concentration of the organohalide. Carbocation formation is our rate limiting step. And second, since the nucleophile does not have any impact on the rate law, the concentration and strength of it doesn't matter. So this reaction has an intermediate and if you draw the energy diagram for this We're going to have a starting material, a product, but then I'm also going to draw the intermediate which is the carbocation. We go through a transition state to get to the intermediate. That should be your tallest hump because that's the rate determining step. And then we go over another transition state to get to the product. The last thing that I'll note for now, keep in mind since you do have a carbocation, you need to watch for carbocation rearrangement.